ESG matters predominantly because uh, in the last 20 to 25 years, the economy has shifted from value and risk being determined predominantly in the intangible assets of a corporation uh, to the intangible dimensions. Uh, as we shift into the 20, late 20, you know, 20th century, 21st century, the economy moves more to a knowledge-based economy. And in that environment, uh, we have to assess the intangible dimensions of a corporation. Where are they creating value? And then what are the potential risks, intangible risks, that could arise? Um, and this is fundamental to ESG uh, and any e good ESG uh, shop or research team or solution will be designed around data that captures the intangible value and risk dimensions. And we think that ultimately clients uh, that, uh, that are not taking into account the ESG or intangible non-financial dimensions of a corporation are missing a huge source of information. So ESG integration uh, has advanced quite a bit in the last uh, three to five years. Uh, it was predominantly uh, ESG was mainly exclusionary screening. Uh, it was about pulling out the alcohol, tobacco, firearms of, of, of a company. Uh, the revenue involvement in those in those areas. Uh, as we have had higher quality of disclosure, higher quality of data, uh, and more sophisticated techniques on the portfolio construction uh, levels, uh, we're able to integrate uh, the, this different levels of ESG data across different spectrums from carbon to the environment to the social to the governance um, and we're able to make greater sense of that. And so now you have a, a much, you know, I guess more advanced levels of ESG integration. And uh, now it's also transitioning from predominantly an equity story about ESG integration into equity. And now we can move into fixed income. We can move into alternatives, real estate. Um, and so ESG integration over the last two years has grown so much across asset class uh, that, you know, all of our teams have, have been leaning into it. In the last two years, the central concern for most of the asset owners based on the PRI has been uh, climate and climate risks and potentially climate opportunities. Um, you know, it, it is the goal of State Street Global Advisors to educate our clients on this. Uh, many are perhaps hesitant. Uh, they don't understand the potential risks that are at play within the, within the portfolio, either equity or fixed income portfolio. Um, and so it's, it's our uh, role, our fiduciary responsibility to educate them and make them aware of the potential risks in their portfolio. And then to help them, to help be their advisor on trying to integrate the latest data, analytics, data science into creating potential ways to mitigate that risk or potentially take advantage of green revenues, uh, rev green revenue or new, new energy economy sectors in the portfolio. And so we think that institutional investors really need to uh, assess this as a legitimate key risk. The conference overall has been fabulous. Uh, the, the speaker list is, is, is amazing um, and it's, it's nice that it coincides with the New York climate event and the UN speeches and the Bloomberg uh, Global Summit uh, series. So, I mean, the city is just vibrant right now and uh, it's nice to have the, uh, the amount of interest in, in climate right now is, is peaking over the last few years. It's been of interest, but now I think it's at a, a crucial, crucial stage, a tipping point. And so now the more people who start to you know, assess this risk and capture the data on these risks and integrate it into solutions, uh, then the, the, you know, 
the faster movement we have to potentially allocating capital to a more sustainable climate, sustainable world, sustainable economy. So this is a, this is a conference that I you know we'll, we'll we'll come back to over and over because we think that it's on the you know the cutting edge of, of climate science integrating into the financial sector.